I'm back. This is my second time making this video. The first time I completed it, nothing went wrong and the video is actually pretty good. The issue being is I did not realize that I was recording using Xbox screen capture. My regular files are around 200 megabytes, was around 2 gigs, and I just do not want to upload that. So anyway, here we are again. So let's begin. This is a continuation of our last video, which is C++ and GUI development using Qt Creator. Well, just using Qt. It's not necessary for you to watch the last video because so far all we have created is basic C++ classes. So let's do a quick refresher. We have three classes, item, item list, item reader, and item writer. Oh, we actually have four classes, my mistake. So item is a simple class that is used to, not reference, but is used to represent products or goods in a store. We notice we have four private members, a barcode, a description, stock, and price, where stock refers to how many instances of that good are available in the store. We have a basic constructor that sets the values given in the parameter list above in, in parentheses right here. We have a isValidBarcode function. We have four get methods. No, one, two, three, four. We have five get. Why do I have five? Barcode description. Oh, okay, my yeah, we do have four get methods, one setting method, and one string method. The two string method returns a Q-string representation of our class instance. If we go into our implementation file, we see that our function, which is the constructor, all it does is set the values given in the, par in the parentheses to the associated uh, private members. We then truncate the barcode. All that means is if the barcode length is greater than 13, make it 13. If the description length is greater than 20, make it 20. We then have is valid barcode. All this does is it determines if the barcode is valid. Nothing too special there. We have our getting method. These are very simple, no need to explain. Our setting method, also very simple, no need to explain. We then have our two string function. If this is your first time working with Qt, you may not be aware that Qt comes with its own type, such as Q string, Q item box, Q spin box, etc., etc. Using QString, we can do a format string where we pass in uh, placeholders. Placeholders are created using a percent sign and either a valid char. So our example here is number one, number two, number three, and the number four. These all together make placeholders. Then to supply those placeholders, all we do is dot arg, and then we supply our placeholder, our values right here. Similarly. All an uh, item reader does is it opens a text file, processes the context of that contents of that uh, text file, and uses it to create item objects. Item writer will read an item and write it to a text file. Item list, all it does, it stores items. So we have a base constructor. We have a constructor with two parameters. We have a text to item list. Remember, if we want to go from a text file and create item instances, we have to do an item reader. We have item list to text file. So to go from an item to a text file, we use item writer. We then have a get list of items functions, a get count function, a search by barcode function, a remove item, and we have a static member called list of items, which is a QMAP. The reason it's static, what will that do? It means all instances will refer to one list, or specifically one QMAP. A QMAP is basically a dictionary similar to Python. We have a private member called integer, which is count. Well, count, which is an integer. So let's go ahead and spin item list. We notice that base constructor does nothing. The constructor with two parameters, it loops over the array of items, inserting items into our QMAP. We have text to item list. All this does, as we notice, it opens the uh, it opens an instance of item reader and it reads contents of a file. We then have item writer, which uh, takes items from the item list and writes it to a file. We have the guest list of items function, which just returns our QMAP. We have our get count, which is an incredibly difficult function. It returns count. We have search by barcode. And then we have a remove item function. Okay, now let's actually begin. 
with GUI development. The first thing we're going to do is create an item dialog class. So let's go here and click on a folder and go to add new C++ class item dialog. Here we go. Let's go to our interface file and begin. First thing we will do is make sure we have all our necessary includes available. So we need the item. You'll include a Q dialog. Q line edit. Do I not have, okay, I'm gonna go into my projects folder. I'm gonna go cute plus equals widgets. And this should solve everything. Let's go back to our item dialog. Okay, yeah, it did get solved. So I had to include cute dialog. And now we see that our uh, files are popping up. Q line edit include if you don't know what all of these are, don't worry, I'll explain these in a minute. Spin box, include Q spin box. Alrighty, let's go here. We include all our necessary files. Let's get to building our item dialog. It will inherit publicly from Q dialog. We will then create a few static functions. So we have static add item, it will return a reference of an item, and static, change item. Now that I almost said this is wrong. So item, add item, all right. You'll then go ahead and create a few private methods. I mistake private members. Private. These will be the widgets that we will use to actually create or give the appearance of our dialogue. Q line edit, another Q line edit. This one will be description. Nope. Description. All right. We have Q spin box. Q spin box. It will be stock. And then Q double spin box, which is our price. Because our price is a double. We will then create an instance of our dialog. Q dialog, Q. Uh, let me actually, I'll add it now, but I will comment it out. Parent equals zero, okay. So this one's quite simple. We have two static member functions, add item and change item. We have Q line edit barcode, Q line edit description, Q spin box stock, Q double spin box price. Let's go to our implementation file and get some work done there. Here we will need a Q form layout to lay out our dialog and Q push button. All right. I actually don't know why I commented this out. Okay, let's go back to our item dialog. Here. Q widget. Q widget parent. We will set Q dialog to parent and you'll begin creating our function. 
first thing we'll do is we'll set a barcode is equal to a new Q line edit. We pass in this. Our description similarly is equal to a new Q line edit. We pass in this. Stock is a new Q spin box, which will let us have a default value and also let us increment the value or decrement the value. We'll say stock set value, initial value will be zero. Stock dot set single step, so how much we want to increase by? Set single step of one. You'll also set a maximum on the stock. Set maximum. This will be, let's say 100. You will then go ahead and do similarly to price to be a new Q double spin box. You pass in this. The value here will be 0, .0, 0.0 because it is a double price set maximum. Our maximum price, let's go 20,000. We'll do a price dot set single step. Let's go with one dot zero. So far, all we have done is instantiate our four private members. We'll now start to begin to create the layout, Q form layout, layout, which is equal to The reason why I'm passing this everywhere is it refers to the parent. The parent is this class, so we just pass this. We'll do a layout, add roto layout, which will be barcode. And we'll pass in the actual barcode. We'll do this three more times. This description description that's weird okay uh, this will be let's go with stock and stock price and price so I'm going to try to give us an early look of the font, the widget as it's been created before it's been created into the final product. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. All right. You'll then create a Q push button and we'll call one OK button. And we'll set this equal to a new Q push button. Dynamic memory allocation. Gonna love it. Let's say OK. We'll pass in this. We'll create another Q push button. And it will be a cancel button. New Q push button. Surprisingly, not. We pass in this as well. We'll now do layout. Dot add widget, the OK button. Layout.add widget one more time and the cancel button. We'll now do set layout, the layout we have created. Great. Now, something that's imperative for us signal, so connect, uh, let's say use built in signals and slots. So we'll say connect. We want to connect the OK button widget to the signal of being clicked. So Q push button clicked to this. And when it is clicked, we want to invoke the Q dialog. Q 
queue dialog except. We'll do it one more time and we will say connect what widget, the cancel widget. We want it to get in the signal of being click, so queue push button. This and then we'll do a queue dialog again, so queue dialog, but this time reject. That should work. Okay. We'll then go ahead and create our item. Item dialog, add item. This doesn't take anything, so we'll begin creating our function. There's quite a bit that will go in here. We'll go ahead and say item dialog. We create an instance, so it creates instance. Create instance of our class. We we'll obviously should add the appropriate title, which will be create item. If our dialog does get executed, is equal to queue dialog accepted. We'll come down here into this if block. All we have to do is return a new item we pass in dialog dot barcode dot text okay, something a little weird happening here dialog dot barcode text okay Okay, something going wrong here. Let me just check everything. So item, item dialog, add item, item dialog, add dialog, we set window title. If we execute the dialog, return new item. Let's go back into our interface file. Barcode is a pointer. So I should not be able to access it the way I'm accessing it now. Okay. Dialog dot description. Text. Value. And finally dialog dot price and value as well okay if that doesn't work all we do is return zero hmm. dialog with barcode okay item this is change item And we know that it takes one parameter that we an item instance. So item, item, so first if item for some reason is equal to null pointer, we'll just go ahead and return null pointer. If not, I need to, all right, I sneezed item dialog we'll create an instance again so we have our layout dialog set window title this will be change item let me give me some space to work with and we'll go dialog we'll grab the barcode We'll then go ahead and grab its text and we'll set text. Set text, we'll set it to item. 
get barcode and we'll do it again so dialog dot description set text item get description so all we're doing is we're populating our values with the values of the given item if we want to change it we can change it so dialog dot stock dot set value and we'll do item get stock dialog price we'll grab value point to right we'll then do if dialog dot execute is equal to q dialog accepted then we will return new item dialog dot barcode we we'll just go ahead and copy this okay if for some reason that doesn't work we'll go ahead and return null pointer we will save everything this is an issue here save everything let's just go to our main and see if we have errors we should have at least a few okay so there's an error here expected primary expression before the dot and this is our item reader function so where is my file so q string item list q string unless in my item reader okay this is a simple error this should not be a dot okay then we return item item dot trimmed space sl trimmed trim two in two double okay that should sort things out Class Q file has no member read line. Q string item SL Q string input file. Unless I spelled wrong and input file, right? Item reader. Okay, I see what's wrong here. Input file dot read line. Dot read line, and then you do they should close it. Dot split. You can split based on the tab character. Item SLs are declared in the scope. And item SL was declared in the scope. Return item. Okay, so item SL was not declared in the scope. Return item. Item SL. Zero dot trimmed. Does it tell me which one? Control. Hmm. Return item. Item SL. If I do return item. If I pass in the value of zero, I can do a dot trimmed. I can do it again. This in position one, and I can trim it. I can continually do that, so it is picking up the item. So somewhere it's not okay. 
qString input file dot read line dot split okay okay item item sl zero dot trimmed To double K item SL is not declared in the scope unless in my item okay my item reader did I miss something in my item reader my item reader Q file input file public is item reader read item end of file and item reader destructor q string list q string list control read item it was not declared in the scope mm. that's very weird all right, so I realize that I am just blind. This should fix everything. No match operator plus. Okay. Yeah, because it should be plus plus, not triple plus. Okay, we have a few more errors. Q line edit does not name a type. Okay, that's true. It should be Q line edit. That's why I was getting issues with the barcode. No type uh, declared note item declared in class item dialog. Mm. So I want to look at my item dialog. Item, item dialog, add item. And if I go to my interface file, add item. Oh, okay, so item dialog. Item, item dialog. Static item, change item, add item. That's why there, okay, that's what the error is. And then uh, prototype for item item dialog change item. So the issue is here. Item dialog change item. If I just go here. If I get rid of that, and if I do item dialog change item, and I pass in item. Prototype. For item, item dialog change item does not match any class in item dialog. So if I go into my item dialog, I did not pass in the parameter that is required, which is an item. Debugging is always fun. Expected something and I did not supply it. So that's one, two, three. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That should go there. And our bowl completes. If we go into main, let me just figure out how I want to show this. Let me go ahead and just include all the files that I want. So hashtag include an item.
and then item dialog okay how do i want to do this uh let's go ahead maybe i can do something like let's go ahead and say okay the instance of item let's call it item Add item, okay. And then we won't process anything. Let us do Control B, Control R. Cannot create a widget without Q application. Okay. Sensor Q application. We will call it A and we'll do A to execute. We'll do control run. And here we go. Here is our dialog widget change item. I mean, sorry, create item window where we can enter a barcode. Well, barcodes typically numerical. We can enter a description. So let's say serial. We can enter our stock. You can enter our price if need be. You'll go to OK and nothing should happen. You'll go ahead and close this window. And just do something. Let's do some basic processing and say if item is not equal to null pointer, which is equivalent to zero, we'll go ahead and let's go ahead and include Q debug. Q debug. And we just output the values to the console. Do we get barcode? We give some space and we'll do an item dot get description. Okay, we'll save everything. We'll build, we'll run. Okay, we'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, uh, chocolate. C H O C O. Chocolate. Cereal. Stock. We have five items in stock. And a price of twin. Let's go with 30. Right. Okay, and here we get everything output to the console the barcode, the description, the stock, and the price. That's it, it is working. We have quite a bit more to do, but that's for another video. All right, bye-bye.